What's up, everybody? It's Mike and Nick here with CST. We're here to recap UFC 300, jump into our PFL bets and our boxing Haney vs. Garcia bets and early leans for this week. There's no UFC, so we're going to be breaking down PFL and some boxing. And if you're here, make sure you subscribe to our channel and throw us a like and a comment, maybe your favorite fighter of the week, favorite fight of the week, lock of the week, anything like that. And we'll jump right into it with the UFC 300 recap. It was a crazy ass card, man. I think it 100% like we had these high expectations and in my opinion, it was well exceeded those expectations. I was over the moon on Saturday night. Yeah, especially when Armand won. You just had to love that. As close of a fight as it was. I know everyone's arguing that Charles should have won, but can we be honest? That's just everyone fucking fanboying out. There was no robbery to be discussed. Armand once Armand won. Fair and square. And then also, Max Holloway by finish. I fucking told everybody, lock of the week, hammer of the week, Max fucking Holloway. Bang, 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 bang. Some fucking idiot on Twitter said, you don't know what a style matchup is, you moron. You know what a fucking style matchup is? Is when one fighter wins and another fighter fucking loses, dog. And guess what? All my plays, not all of them, that's bullshit. Because <laughs> my prelim picks were ass. But, you know. My main card picks were pretty solid, so I was uh, pretty pretty happy about UFC 300. We got an all-time classic moment with Max Holloway. You know, I thought overall, man, the fights were incredible. Man, Diego Lopez surprised the hell out of me. Maybe he is way better than I gave him credit for. I truly thought Sadiq Yusuf was going to make a good fight out of that, but damn, that was one-sided as hell. Personally, I had my fight of the night being Jerry versus uh, Rockic. People thought I was crazy for saying that, but I thought. Uh, for the seven and a half to eight and a half minutes at last, it was just all out bananas and all out war. My second favorite fight of the night was Zhang versus Yan. Holy shit. That fight had so many swings from the knockdowns to Yan being choked literally unconscious and being saved walking to the second round. What a card. What are some of your favorite moments for that card, man? It was awesome. The whole thing to me. Uh, I mean, Beginning to end, it was crazy. I did horrible on my picks and my bets. Uh, I hit some straights. I hit some hedges to save myself um, with Yiri and a couple other fighters where still last second. Huh? Uh, are you still there? I think it cut out for a minute. At least it, the audio cut out for me. Okay. Well, hopefully uh, it's recording on both sides. I think I think hopefully it should do that. The last time when I I thought you were cutting out. Um, when I look back through, it was, it was clean. So hopefully that's the case, but yeah, I, I hit some hedges. That was pretty much the, uh, the, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. It has me in shambles. It doesn't matter. I did not do well on USC 300 from a betting standpoint, but I came up on PFL the night before. So everything was all good. I really enjoyed the card. Max Holloway, potentially the greatest knockout of all time, just with all the context that comes with it. You know, of course you got Leon and Kamaru, but the Max Holloway Gaethje fight. I had never in my what sixteen years of following the sport now. I have never, like, right as a fight finishes, been that crazy hyped. It was the most insane thing. I we were freaking out. Twitter was going crazy. Group chats are going crazy. Um, I really, I really enjoyed this card. And Yuri showed us that he is a samurai. Rakic had something to say about it. Yuri was like, "Oh, you gonna tell me I'm not a samurai?" And on top of that. Uh, Poetan hit the KB lame, whatever that meme is. Told, told Herb Dean to chill out for a second. Let me do my thing, and then memes, uh, emotes on Jamal Hill. I was actually incredibly confident in Jamal, even up to that stoppage. I was like, yeah, he's fine here. He's fine here. Nope. Ten out of ten card though. It was amazing. Yeah, I agree. 10 out of 10 card. I thought it was 10 out of 10 on paper before, and it's also cool to see Kayla Harrison now because. Holy shit, she may run through that division. She legit, if she can make that cut safely two to three more times, she may win that title and hold it as long as she can make that cut, quite frankly. So that's the last thing I wanted to say on that. So let's jump right into our bets then in that case. Uh, for PFL, is there anything that really stood out to you specifically for this week coming up? So for me, something I'm waiting for the props to come out on DraftKings. I use DraftKings and FanDuel to bet. The props aren't out yet. I'm sure there's a possibility they're already out on Bet Online. I don't use Bet Online, so I'm not going to base it off that right now. 
But I wrote down a few names. I, I like Otto Rodriguez and his matchup. He's fighting Tyler Diamond. Tyler Diamond is no spring chicken. He's 33 years old. Otto Rodriguez is 36 years old. But Otto Rodriguez gets subs. And uh, Tyler Diamond has lost by sub one time, I believe. That's not a lot. He doesn't have very many losses. But Otto Rodriguez gets subs. And if I see a decent line on that fight, I'm going to be taking Otto Rodriguez by sub. I might throw him in a couple lotto parlays as well. And on top of that, if I'm looking at anybody, I interesting matchup right here. I got Shamil Museyev against Logan Storley. Um, Logan Storley's good. He he has a, a very few amount of losses as well. He's a minus near a minus uh, 200 favorite right now. Two to one favorite against a guy who I believe is undefeated. Let me check. I was doing my research on this boy Shamil, and he finishes people and. We've seen a few times now where um, Logan Storley has, you know, kind of laid and prayed his way to a victory. This guy, Shamil Musayev, 30 years old, 14-0. and 0. He has nine wins by KO, two wins by submission, and three by decision. I just think that based on the way he strikes, because this guy is a beast. When he's striking from the tape that I was able to see... Uh, he has pretty dynamic striking. He likes to incorporate wrestling into it as well. And I know Logan Storley has great wrestling, but I think that if Logan Storley gets stuck on the feet, he's getting knocked out. And he is currently, Shamil Musiev is currently a plus 165 underdog. So those are my two favorite plays of the week so far. But I'm going to be doing some more uh, researching and I'll move forward with more bets as the week goes on. Nice, man. I mean, I love this card personally from a betting perspective, just because I think the lines are a lot closer for certain fights than they should be. Um, I have a parlay that I put together here that's plus 160 in total here. That's only two legs that I love. It's Adam Borix over Enrique Barzola. Enrique Barzola is on the downside of his career. I mean, he has two wins, but in terms of his age, um, and he's 34 years old. He does get hit a lot, and he relies on his opponents really to gas themselves out before he takes on the pressure his last win against Jalen Bates wasn't all that impressive quite frankly when Jalen Bates is a young up-and-comer who is known to gas out uh, I do think Enrique Barzola is one of the underappreciated fighters out of AKA but fighting a young stud like Adam Borix who has great ring leadership great control in general he boxed the hell out of Mads Burnell <laughs> he he, quite frankly, toe-to-toe, bell-to-bell -to -bell beat up on Jeremy Kennedy. And I'm really impressed by his Mike Hamill win where he's put into some sticky situations against a bigger fighter. And he still worked his way out of that. So I like Adam Borix a lot, who's a natural 145er fighting Enrique Barzola, who's moving up to 145, 135. Uh, you can catch his line right now at minus 120. But if you parlay him with Gyoti Yamauchi, my boy against Neiman Gracie, for whatever reason, they're having this rematch. <laughs> if you don't remember, Yamauchi knocked the hell out of Neiman Gracie in the second round with an uppercut. After not only was he walking him down, but he dropped him and rocked him bad in the first round. Neiman Gracie couldn't take him down on his two attempts to save his life with full hands clapped. Every single time that he tried to engage in any sort of grappling, Neiman Gracie would lay on his back. Yamauchi would just play the heel control, kick his legs, and let him stand back up just to keep piecing him up and walking him forward. I don't think this fight's close. Yamauchi is a minus 238 right now. I think he's going to do the same exact thing he did last time. Check that. I actually think this fight will go to the decision based on my theory because I always have a rematch, uh, a rematch theory. Uh, quite frankly, back to my theories with bets, is if a fight ends with a knockout in the first fight, I like to bet the decision for the second fight. But I like Yamauchi outright. I like Adam Borix outright. Uh, if you parlay them together, you can get them at plus 160, and that's my favorite play for PFL this week. Yeah, I like that a lot. Adam Borix was another guy I was looking at. Enrique Barzola does have that good pressure, uh, but I think he's Hell he's meeting his match here. Uh, yeah. And that's the one thing is he relies on that pressure too much. A lot of his wins... You know, his last few wins from what I've seen from the Nick, uh, I'm going to slaughter this pronunciation, the Nikita fight, for the kid from uh, Team Fedor, his Jalen Bates when he's just essentially waiting for these kids to gas out before he can take over and cage wrestle them. Adam Boric isn't going to get cage wrestled. And his fight against Pitbull, there's no, there's no shame coming off a loss against Pitbull, man. We saw how damn good he was in his last fight against Jeremy Kennedy. Holy shit, he still has it. So I love this parlay, plus 160. I think it's possibly a hammer spot. Um... Also, we also have a great boxing card coming up with Devin Haney and Ryan Garcia, of course. So if I may start off with that, I have one play for the main event that I really love. Let's get it. 
Fuck yeah. I like Devin Haney by knockout. I'm just going to take it outright, outright and simple. Plus 180 for right now for Devin Haney by TKO, KO, or disqualification. Just think about if Ryan Garcia were to walk out to the cage, pull the funniest move ever, and walk right out before it even starts. Disqualification. I do think Devin Haney is going to go to the body where we've seen Ryan Garcia have multiple weaknesses and multiple fights with body punches. Devin Haney's record is far superior to Ryan Garcia's can-crushing record. I really like the way that he turns his opponents, keeps them moving left, and he can cut corners to keep them inside of the ring. Ryan Garcia, while his hands are fast, he's always had defensive lapses, and he's always committed the defensive sins in boxing, moving straight back, dropping his hands low, never having a good head movement or a high shell guard. With that being said, I don't think this fight's close. I think Devin Haney wipes the floor with Ryan Garcia, and he's eventually going to get the finish. I can see the finish happening anywhere from round 6 to 10. So. Yeah, and that could be an interesting prop as well. Uh, usually on FanDuel, they have um, larger round betting. So, like, I can play him via KO in rounds 7 through 9, 6 through 10. And, of course, if you want to try to snipe out a possible round. But that's very dangerous, of course, from a betting standpoint, unless you're just throwing small sprinkles. I think just for my, my uh, D-Gen, I might sprinkle a tiny little bit on an earlier, like maybe rounds four through seven, Garcia by knockout. I don't think he's going to win. But the only thing that makes me say it's worth a tiny little uh, Hail Mary, just the way he came out against Javante Davis, uh, he really went after him. And obviously we saw what happened. It led to his demise because when you're going after somebody that crazy, you're going to leave yourself open. And that's probably what's going to happen in this fight. But let's say there's a magical chance that he does something to Devin Haney because Devin Haney's been rocked before. And I know that previously in sparring sessions between Garcia and Haney, Haney admitted that uh, Ryan had gotten the better of him a couple times. And uh, no, he said one time, but still, you know, it's going to be a fun fight. I just hope Ryan doesn't go out too sad because I think he's a great entertainer. Yeah, I don't I mean, I can understand. That. I think that's a donation to the books personally. Yeah. I really I think Ryan Garcia's mindset is important. With MMA, we've seen fighters not have the great mindset coming into press conference and things of that nature. And those fighters do well. In boxing, it's almost never the case. If you have seen like something, a screw is loose before you walk into the ring, a screw is loose. And usually the chip off the old block gets knocked quickly. It's quite insane, man. I'm a little worried about Ryan Garcia and his mental health. I don't think he should be taking this fight right now. Um, I think he gets finished. I don't think... And I wouldn't doubt, though, I do want to say on your point, I wouldn't doubt if he does take a round or two. I just think for him to get a finish in the early rounds is, I just can't see it, man. I think Devin Haney's defensive mindship is too too solid, and I think he moves too well. So, Yeah, he's a world champion. I mean, Devin Haney's one of the best there is. I will and he has this to help you know. sleep on his resume. I genuinely appreciate his resume, and I have him winning against Lomachenko 7-5. At worst, I could have scored it a draw, but I had him up 7-5 myself. We, we don't even get into that one. But, uh, yeah, I, I, give Ryan, I give Ryan respect. Uh, he, you know, going from fighting Tank to fighting Haney, he's one of the only guys that's coming out here fighting real killers. I mean, obviously, you say he has the can-crushing record, but who else is doing that? He's like, yeah, I'll fight Tank. George All right, yeah, I'll fight Cambosis is tough, too. He's tough, but you see a guy like Devin Haney, he's not doing that. Or someone that will always take the toughest fights. I just wanted to throw that out there randomly as hell because uh, I respect the hell out of his resume as well. So uh, it, regardless if it's wins or losses, he fights the best fights, and I appreciate that. So, Yeah, that's. I wish it happened more, like in boxing. Like I wish – I mean, of course, here and there, there are mandatory challengers, but it's usually still not the best people against the best people. Like, if it, like in the UFC, Dana says, yo, you're fighting this guy. And if you don't fight him, all right, I'm stripping you of the title. And Dude, I wish boxing would get a little bit more like that. Follow suit. Queensberry versus Matchroom 5v5. I'm going to drop a video on it very shortly. Be on the lookout for it, everyone. It's going to be fucking insane. This 5v5 is literally as good as it gets. I am rock hard with emotion. Shout out to Brian Campbell for that one because holy shit, it's going to be sick, man. Uh, do you have any uh, further bets for this boxing card as well? No, I, I'm probably going to be uh, tuning in later. If, if, I'm, if I can catch the whole thing, I will 100%, but I'm going to try to get uh, just a little bit of popcorn, a little bit of, you know, I want to enjoy Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, and hopefully it doesn't go too poorly for my boy. I, I'm partial to Ryan Garcia. I know it's a tall task to try to beat a guy like Devin Haney. It's probably not going to happen, but big respect to Ryan Garcia for taking the fight, and let's see how he does.
Uh, in that case, I do have one more bet then in that case I, I want to bring up then. Uh, the co-main event of that, uh, you have Jose Ramirez versus David Jimenez. Uh, David Jimenez is, you know, coming off the two wins that he obviously should have won with two can-crushing knockouts. He had a split decision loss against Artem Dalekan, uh for the flyweight champion, the WBO flyweight championship. Um, and quite frankly, I think he should have won that fight with his body punching, his pressure, and his forward style. I love David Jimenez here at plus money against at 145. David Ramirez going against split decisions against Fernando Diaz doesn't inspire real championship awe-inspiring material to me. And him at minus 180 right now, I don't understand the close to two to one odds juice on it. David Jimenez technically, in my opinion, should be 21 and 0 right now. He should be the WBO flyweight champion and he should be defending for other fly uh, for other titles. So with that being said, I'm going to take David Jimenez at plus 145. It's not a hammer spot or anything, but I think to play, you know, a nice little bit of money on it, maybe 50, 100 bucks, depending on what your unit is uh, for you to generate out there. I don't know what that size is. So I like that a lot too, as well. It's not as much as of a lock to me as Devin Haney by knockout, but at plus 145, taking a 50 50 fight, I love David Jimenez here. All right. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm going to have to try to tune in for that one as well. I might throw a little something on your boy, David Jimenez. Absolutely. Uh, I'm excited, you know, without having any UFC this week, I'm going to try to, I, I work on Friday, so I'll try to catch PFL if I can. And, uh, the boxing fights are on Saturday, are they? Yes, sir. Yeah. You got a, you got them on Saturday here. You got Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. Uh, as per mentioned, the co-main event is that Jimenez versus Ramirez mm -hmm. fight. This card isn't overly stacked by any standards, but I do think boxing is on a huge up and up in general as a business. I think the business with Saudi Arabia has been freaking incredible, which I wasn't one of those people that like to call the dude your majesty. But Ala Crochet, man, shout the fuck out to you, your majesty. You have been killing it for boxing in general. So I think this fight is also one of those great fights for boxing because people love Ryan Garcia. It brings in a good crowd. And I think Devin Haney is one of those underappreciated and overly hated boxers in the game right now. So when he does tune up Ryan Garcia, which trust me, y'all, he will tune up Ryan Garcia. It's going to be great for his name. Yeah. I, I mean, to that point, I hope, it, you know, I like Ryan Garcia, but I hope Devin Haney does what, because sometimes Devin Haney will come out and he's like talking about violence. Like, oh, I'm about to beat the fuck out of you. I'm about to, and then he goes and point fights his way to a decision. And it's like, bro, I wouldn't hate on that if you weren't talking about violence, because you're not doing violent things in that ring most of the time. So if he was going to go out there like, yeah, you ain't going to touch me. I'm about to this and that, whatever. And then does that. It's like, okay. But sometimes he says some stuff and I'm like, ooh, Devin Haney's about to fuck this boy up. And then I'm watching it and I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah, he's winning, definitely. He's he's really good. But uh, hopefully, you know, he goes out there and makes a statement. I just think this is the right style matchup. Devin Haney, who is naturally a body puncher, you know, he's great at getting people against the ropes and cutting for the uh, cage control in himself or ring control. I'm always mixing up my MMA and boxing terms. Um I love Dan Haney in this matchup, and I think he does bring the violence. And I don't think Ryan Garcia is in the mind state to have a violent fight with him. So, Devin Haney by finish. Uh, whatever round you guys want to pick, I'm not going to go and play anything. I think Devin Haney by knockout at plus 180 is plenty enough juice for me. So That sounds good. So, it looks like we got PFL boxing this week. Nick will be dropping the 5v5 video soon, and I'll probably come out later this week with a final PFL picks and lotto parlays. We're looking to stay active, stay consistent. Everybody who came here today, if you're still watching, hit sub, hit like, throw us a comment on your favorite fight of the week, and we'll be back with you guys soon. Much love, y'all. Appreciate you. Hey, peace, y'all.